What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be looking at some brand new gear. It is another round of Fresh Gear Friday. Let's break it down, starting right now. Stools have been uh, too cool for school lately. I've been testing out a lot of new stools and this one is the BTR stool from Hillsound. Now, if you're not familiar with Hillsound, I've been using their Packstack Pros a lot lately, the last couple of years, and have really enjoyed them. So they're a small company, I'm not affiliated with them, uh, but they've been sending me some new gear. Now, I have not been the biggest chair user or stool user. I often just like to backpack on the ground, but I've started recently reincorporating stools and chairs into my life and my knees have been thanking me. So they are really nice to use. This one is super minimalistic. It is very basic and it's really cool. When it's in this three leg mode, these legs lock. When you close it, then you can close these up. It's very small, very light. You can wrap this thing around and hook it up like that. And you've got a cool little super lightweight backpacking stool. It is the easiest one uh, I've used of all of the stools. Got that cool fancy locking mechanism that sounds all satisfying. It is made of aluminum alloy and it weighs in at 14.7 ounces. This is the bigger stool. And if you want, you can save two ounces by getting the smaller stool. So this is the 17 inch. There's a 14 inch as well where you can shave off a couple more ounces. It is the lightest stool I've used so far. Uh, the other most recent comparable tool stool is the Grand Trunk 360 degree swivel stool that weighs in at one pound and costs $60. So this one has been great. Uh, it doesn't have as high of a weight rating capacity. I believe that the weight that it can hold is about 240 pounds. Uh, whereas the Grand Trunk one, it is over 300 pounds. Honestly, I'm a little skeptical of. In none of these tests do I actually know how long, how durable are these, because it's a really first look. But uh, what I can say is that this is the simplest one out of all of the chairs and stools that I've used so far. But that being said, what would I actually want to go backpacking with? Now, this wins for being the lightest, the slimmest, um, the least amount of space that's going to add to my pack. But uh, stools are inherently great for small amounts of sitting. Let's say camp prep, you're sitting around the campfire, you're making dinner, things like that. But after an hour uh, of being around camp, you really start wanting to be able to sit back and have a back support. So that is the downfall of stools, of course, but chairs are often either a little bit heavier or just simply more expensive to get the high comfortable ultralight styles. So you're often spending over a hundred and generally closer to $150 if you want a little bit more comfort for you. I'm excited to actually go use this on some backpacking trips. It is new for me, but I really still like that 360 degree swivel. So I'm gonna have a hard time giving it up, but you know, this is a pretty cool stool. And for the people who are ounce counters, this might be the one for you. Okay, this is the Thermarest Parsec zero degree seating bag. Now it is winter and it is getting into some really cold temperatures at night. And this has actually been one of the best winter sleeping bags that uh, I've used. And I have actually used this bag, so I can speak a little bit more to it. So the zero degree Thermarest bag is one of my favorites. This is a great sleeping bag and it is much more economically priced compared to these like expedition style, really hardcore sleeping bags. This is, I think, $560. So it's not cheap, but as opposed to some of those other like negative 10, negative 20 degree bags where they're just like $800, $900. This is 800 fill hydrophobic down. And what I really like that Thermarest does is that they use Nic Wax on their hydrophobic down, which is a cleaner, less toxic chemical to actually treat the down. And if you're not familiar with hydrophobic down, what that means is that the individual down feathers have been treated with a repellent, a water repellent, so that if this thing gets wet, got a lot of condensation in the tent, 
it's not going to get into the down, which is gonna make it clumpy, which then means that you are at risk of cold exposure because the down is not going to be insulating. So with hydrophobic down, you have so much more safety in case something goes wrong. The other thing that really makes this sleeping bag great is just the fabric. I think this is some of the most comfortable fabric of any sleeping bag that I've used. I really like the hood on this one. Some things that are great is that you have these pockets for storing things. When it's really cold out, your electronics have a really hard time. So if you sleep with things like your cell phone, uh, maybe other batteries, uh, certain items you may want in your sleeping bag because you don't want them to freeze. Uh, so certainly it's got that cell phone pocket and it just has a good bit of room inside. And one of the other things that I really like about this is the foot box. The foot box actually has this like toe shaped space. The other thing that you can see here is that the bag actually connects to the mattress. It's got two of these uh, points, these connection points. And what I really like about that is that it really just helps you stay on your pad throughout the night, especially when the temperatures are cold. That's very important that you're not actually rolling off that sleeping mattress because that ground, touching the ground, is what saps all of your heat and that can really destroy your quality of sleep overnight. The zippers on this bag are really, really nice. They're very clean. I don't have a problem with things getting stuck. The other part of this equation is that it has a draft collar. And if you're not familiar with cold sleeping, cold weather sleeping bags, draft collars are critical because you can really, <clears throat> because you can really attach them around your neck. As this is around you, it creates a collar that keeps the warm air from inside your bag from escaping out the hood, which is critical for maintaining the warmth in that bag so your body's not doing extra work. When they say this is a zero degree bag, that is the limit. So if it hits zero, you will probably be in a fitful state of sleep. You can sleep, but you will be fitful. You won't be comfortable. However, the comfort rating is 14 degrees. So that's Fahrenheit, uh, which is negative 10 Celsius. Uh, and if, for those of you who are paying attention to Celsius and metric, um, paying attention to Celsius over Fahrenheit, the limit is negative 18 degrees Celsius. In terms of the extreme rating, it actually doesn't provide that for me. A lot of the bags do, so I'm surprised to see this one not do that. But it's probably around negative 20 to negative 30 degree Fahrenheit extreme rating. And that means that that's where it's going to keep you alive. You won't be sleeping well, you're gonna have a miserable night, but you will be alive the next day. Some people don't know this, is the ratings are actually in conjunction with sleeping mattresses. So you need to have a quality sleeping mattress, something with some pretty good R value for these to actually keep you warm. If you just have nothing underneath you or a really poor insulated sleeping mattress, a lot of that heat is still gonna come out the bottom of that camera battery died there because it's cold. So yeah, I am a big fan of the Thermarest Parsec. It's a really great bag, especially if you're looking to get into the extended season sleeping. It's gonna be well below freezing and it's, it's a sleeping bag that you could realistically have throughout your full season. You could use this as a true winter bag if you do some precautions, you do some things to uh, beef it up with a good sleeping mattress. And if you're gonna be out there when it's really, really cold and wintry, if you're up in the Alpine or if you're you know, in Northern Ontario or something like that, you'll probably want something to also keep you warm if it's getting really, really cold. Like uh, adding on top a quilt that'll really help extend that temperature range well below zero and give you an additional bit of warmth so that can be one way to make a bag like this be a winter bag, um, or it can be a winter bag on its own if you're not in really extreme conditions. Okay, let's go back up by the fire. I am really excited to be testing out Itacate. A lot of backpacking meals are just not super interesting, and I am really excited to try out meals that are not only from a small company that are from a female entrepreneur who I believe is from Mexico, or at least brings a lot of that vibe, the flavor, el sabor de Mexico. 
uh, which I really appreciate. It's some of my favorite food, so I'm hoping that this food is actually really good. So today I am doing charge up chilequiles. And if you don't know what chilequiles are, you haven't been to Mexico or you haven't been to New Mexico and frankly, you haven't lived. Let's bust out the chilequiles. According to this, a chilequile verde is a traditional Mexican breakfast consisting of tortilla chips smothered in a spicy tomatillo salsa and beans topped with egg and cheese. Another thing to note is that this is not a package that you can add boiling water to, so I need to be cooking it actually in this pot. And by cooking, I really mean just adding this to some boiling water. One thing's for sure, it looks really dang good. Oh, these are some nice looking tortilla chips. Something that I always check on any food that I buy for backpacking is the calorie count. So right here, 490 calories. It does give me a little concern that it's just not gonna be enough. I try to find food that is over 600 calories and closer to 700 calories for a dinner meal. So this supposedly takes five minutes to rehydrate, 300 milliliters of water, so it's not a ton of water. This is in a Mexican slash New Mexican style of food. And it's some of my favorite food, honestly. And uh, here we go. Let's see if it works. Mmm. Oh, that's good. I think that there is room for so much advancement in our backpacking food. I would love to see new people enter into the market to provide new meals, new cultures, uh, new styles of food. And uh, so I'm really excited about itacate. And uh, this, is, this is damn good. And it is spicy. So if you like spicy, mm. Okay, my friends, that's it for me. Hope you like this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it that thumbs up. It definitely helps the channel out. And I'd love to see you stick around. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of these chilequiles, sit by the campfire. Cheers, everybody. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.